Georgia Senator Kelly Loeffler had one key message for voters watching last night's debate against Democratic opponent Raphael Warnock. Let's take a listen. Radical liberal Raphael Warnock. 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 Democratic strategist and CEO of Pine Street Strategies, Don Calloway, and co-host of the Realignment podcast, Marshall Kosloff, join us now to talk about last night's debate and the state of those Georgia races overall. Great to see you guys. Good to see you, gents. You Thanks too. for having us. Mm -hmm. um, Marshall, let me start with you. This was, First of all, I've been talking about how she is like the epitome of anti-charisma. I have never seen a less charismatic person, I think, in my entire life. But the, every single answer, it was the same radical liberal talking point. <laughs> Do you think that this is ultimately like, is this effective? They clearly have some polling or something that tells them this is what she should be doing. They're looking at what happened in the presidential election last month. So you saw these suburban white upper middle class people who a lot of the time voted for Joe Biden, the sort of Joe Biden Republicans people have talked about. But at the same time, a lot of them didn't vote for Democrats down ballot, which is why Republicans performed much better in the lower level elections than anyone sort of expected. So the main argument that they're making here is that those suburban voters are turned off by the radical rhetoric, by the idea of defunding the police, by the statues controversies, those sort of things. So that's what they're trying to do there. Yeah, but you know, this is the question, which is whether it's effective. I mean, you know, Don, what do you make just generally of this strategy? Obviously, it seems clear to me she's going after it. an Atlanta upper middle class voter who voted for Kelly Loeffler, David Perdue, but voted for Joe Biden at the top of the ticket. Somebody who, you know, might share crossover with the many hundreds of thousands of people who did that across the country. The question is whether this is an effective strategy. What do you think, Don? Yeah, the answer is no. I mean, I completely agree with Marshall's assessment of the strategy. I just find it really pathetic. And I think I even tweeted last night, moronic. And since I'm trying to stop cursing, that's probably the harshest criticism I'm going to have in my repertoire going in 2021. I don't blame Kelly Leffler for this. I blame the people at the RSCC who, de who, who prepared her for debate and her campaign managers who were like, you know what's cool? Every time you say his name, say radical liberal rock. It's, it, it was silly. It was trite. And it really failed to address any of the merits of what's on the table going forward. I also noticed that in every answer, she said defund the police after she said Raphael, radical liberal Raphael Warnock. Well, as AOC pointed out on Twitter in, his, in her debate versus Nikki Haley, I mean, defunding the police is a local level decision. It has nothing to do with what happens in the United States Senate. So I just found it really fear mongering and ineffective and just really pathetic. Yeah. Well, actually, the people who are defunding the police right now are like the Republicans who don't want to fund state and local We're aid. Yeah. If we want to be We're honest about worse. the impact. Yeah. Um, Don, you know, the truth is, I as silly as I think that the strategy is, I think so much of more of this race is going to come down to national factors. I mean, all races are basically nationalized at this point, and these in particular, the entire nation is watching what happens in the state. I think the dynamics of Trump and was it rigged and are they discouraging people to vote? Are people going to come out to vote for Republicans? I think those are going to ultimately be more important here than unfortunately what happened in the debate last night. What do you make of kind of the landscape right now there for Democrats, both in terms of the uh, Loeffler Warnock race and also in terms of the Purdue Ossoff race? I think you're right in as much as it will not have anything to do with, happen with what happened in the debate last night. If it was about debates and talent, then Andrew Gillum and Stacey Abrams would, go would be governors right now. Uh, so the talent disparity was very clear. Um, I think that this will be a tough race for Democrats. I think that the November results out of Georgia show you, and I think that Ed Marshall would agree, you had a significant amount of moderate suburban Atlanta Republicans who voted Joe Biden. Perhaps they did not go Democrats straight down the ticket, but they voted Joe Biden. And they want to maintain the United States Senate in Republican hands as a check on Biden-Harris administration plus the Pelosi administration in the House. Plus, you simply don't have Donald Trump on the ticket. And that was a major driver of turnout for both sides. Uh, it will take a heroic lift for Stacey Abrams and Georgia Democrats to get all those people back to the polls two months later on the 7th. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I think it'll be a much harder lift than it was in November, number one. And number two, what happened last night in the debate? have no outcome on the no bearing on the outcome.
I completely agree with you, Marshall. I guess the question here, we talked about this earlier in the show, which is that, as you point out, this strategy is entirely geared towards these upper middle class white suburbanites in Atlanta. But at the same time, when Kelly Loeffler at the same debate can't say that Trump lost the election and has been indulging a lot of this Georgia Secretary of State conspiracy level stuff, isn't that going to turn off suburban voters just as much? I mean, they have to choose. They're like, well, radical liberal Raphael Warnock or like Sidney Powell kind of flirting Kelly Loeffler. Offler. Like, what are they going to do? Yeah, you're really getting to why it's easy for us to dunk on the lack of charisma and the inartfulness and frankly disappointing nature of the comments from the actual strategic position the campaign faces, which is they have. I think no enthusiasm for Loeffler as a candidate. They have a problem where a lot of the Republican base is really ticked off over the election results and they're really sort of self-owned with the sort of, hey, elections are rigged, so why would you even turn out to vote in that sort of situation? So all they can basically do right now, especially with Trump's sort of disengagement right now is to turn up the culture war, to turn out the base under the idea that these culture war issues are the number one thing facing them. And to certain degrees, that's not untrue. Both sides do that. But the key mm-hmm. thing here is it's the best they could really offer right now, considering the candidate they have and just how poorly the Trump campaign performed with those suburban voters. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Don, I guess it's not a crazy strategy when you consider that in this sort of you know runoff situation, you are going to have l- lower turnout. So in a lot of ways, it is like a base play kind of a strategy. So is that essentially what they're banking on here? Yeah, I mean, you have to start up the base. I just think it made her look extraordinarily untalented. She didn't say it in a way that was particularly clever or compelling or even convincing. So I didn't come away uh, thinking that Raphael Warnock was a radical liberal. I just came away thinking that she was a very boxed in, robotic, and not very compelling candidate. But you're right, if this gins up their base, I guess that could be some potential utility there. Yeah, Yeah. that's really the question, which is that what I believe the uh, new line will be is you have to uh, outperform the cheats. So you have to be like, we have to vote so much they can't steal the election. But and unfortunately, I actually think that will work pretty well. Okay, guys, we're going to be back with Team Rising right after this. 